Good morning, church. It is good to see you this morning. Let's stand together. And lift our voices together this morning. One, two, three. said amen. We hope you have a story. Hey, if you be seated this morning, hey, we're going to get this over with real quick. Like when everybody watch, I've added a new addition to my wardrobe. Amen? amen. So now it's glass time, all right? Everybody understand that? So uh, laugh or howl or whatever you need to do. Hey, we're glad you're here this morning. Hey, in your uh, information sheet, there's just a few things I want to pick out, and then we're going to move on real quickly, okay? Fall Fest is coming up. We need your help. Miss Rihanna Bacon has done a great job every year. Again, we're expecting anywhere from five to 700 people on campus that day, so we need your help. If you would please help her with the information in the bulletin, and you can do that. Hey, if you'd like to go home and see the, uh, next week go see the new missionary home. It'll be opening. Uh, it's been remodeled, refurbished, and uh, Brother Eddie said it is beautiful. So the times are there. If you'd like to be a part of that, the address, so please do that. A couple other big things coming up. Hey, remind you that this afternoon there's a bridal shout for Miss Stephanie. Well, where did she go? She was. Anyhow, she may be having the baby. Or, or, I, you know, I shouldn't have asked that question, but uh, her, her baby shower will be this afternoon. The information is 2 to 4. It's actually 1.30 to 3.30, so please look at that, and uh, appropriately we'll be praying. 
for dad. He said he's ready to have a baby, So uh, and so is mom. So pray for them. Hey, fi- if you have a finance committee request, uh, the fiscal year is getting ready to change, so if you want to do that, please do that. Uh, there's a thing about a challenge in here, a $50,000 challenge to the building fund. Uh, you can see that, read that, and as is it appropriate. Hey, uh, in a few weeks, uh, Brother Garrett, Miles, and I will be going to do the Carver Lawdale uh, senior adult thing out at uh, Earl Trent. We'd love for you to come. Again, I'll be telling a lot of lies, a lot of it about you. So you might want to be there to defend yourself, but we'll have some fun. Uh, Garrett's going to sing, and um, Garrett does more than just sacred songs. Uh, he has a great selection, so he'll be sharing, and then I'll be telling some funny stories and things of that nature. So fall festival's in there as well. Hey, I want everybody to look at me real quick. Like Today, uh, I ask, very foolishly, I guess, uh, some topics you would like to cover from the pulpit. I don't know why I did that. I must have gone temporarily insane. So today we're going to do, the first one I got was, is it okay for Christians to drink? I don't know. <laughs> Figure it out. Uh, but we're going to look at some verses today. If you look in your, your bullet, it actually says there are positive verses and there are negative verses. And we're just going to discuss that today. Ultimately, as an adult, you'll make up your mind. I'm more concerned about the young people we have here. By the way, isn't it good to see all these young people up here every week? It's a praise God. Bless you guys. Man, just it's always a joy. So today I'm just going to talk to you, give you some reasons. Actually, Dr. Steve Gaines from Bellevue Baptist Church shared seven. I added a couple, and we're just going to discuss that today, and then uh, we, we're going to get out of here hopefully alive and unfired. So we're going to do that today. Hey, we're glad you're here. If you're our guest today on our campus, we are thankful to God that you're here. Church, would you help me do this? Welcome. I already met two families, and um, we are so honored today to have the Pope here, Jim Warren. I'm under a lot of pressure. Brother Jim, love him. He's been such a blessing in Judy and I's life. And Jim, we love you and uh, just pray the Lord bless you. And it's just a joy to have you. A little intimidation when you have the Pope and, you know, the, the master and the student. So y'all pray for me today. All right, man, I'm under a lot, of, a lot of scrutiny here. But hey, in front of you, there's a card right or left says, we're glad you're here. Do this. Take it. Fill it out. As you leave, there's a place in the back of the uh, auditorium that you can leave those. And we'd appreciate you doing that today. Okay. Hey, let's pray, and as we pray this morning, have several, just want to call out some names, pray for the Brown family, uh, their mother's under hospice care, pray for the Ritchie family, Miss Amy's mom's under hospice care, and ask the Lord to be with them and Junior Clanton, and then this morning, Miss Frances Hightower, uh, that is Eve Henson's mother, has just been placed under hospice care. Randy, are you in the room? Uh, Randy asked us to pray for, the, he's on security, so uh, let's pray for these families, but you're here today and say, hey, Pastor, uh, there's just some things privately going on in my life I just don't want to publicly share, but just want to just acknowledge that I have a prayer concern in my life. Would you just raise your hand? Wow. Well, hey, let's do this. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to ask the pianist, sis, did you just kind of play something quietly, if you don't mind, for just a moment? Hey, we're, we're starting to take this moment to just prepare our hearts to worship, and maybe you need to come to the altar. Before we get started, it doesn't mean you're living in sin. It means there's a burden that you want to share and place at the altar before the Lord. If you'd like to just come and lay your burden at the altar right now, we want you to feel welcome to do that today. You're in his house, not our house. And today he loves you. And there may be something deep in your life that you just need God's grace and mercy for today. If you do, I want you to feel comfortable to come and just ask the Lord to bless you. Would you do that? We'll take just a moment. Be quiet before the Lord. Ask Him to bless the remaining music. And then as we just discuss the topic of alcohol in our culture today. Well, Father, we love you. And um, our hearts are turned toward you right now because some of our family members are going through very difficult times. They're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, as David would call it. And so we pray for them this morning. Hospice has been called in and We know medically that you can cure miraculously anybody you choose, but if not, these families will be planning funeral services before long. And so we pray for them today, the grace and the mercy of God. You said you'd never leave us and you'd never forsake us. And so we pray you'd give these families grace during this time. May your mercy, may your presence be more real than it ever has been in their life. We pray for all the many activities coming up in the life of our church and our association. Pray God that your hand would be upon it and you'd get the glory. Many hands were raised a moment ago and Father you know the names and you know the needs. So we pray today you'd minister to them and again as we just discuss this topic, 
biblically and culturally that God you'd speak to our hearts today about as Christians what is right for us and what may be deemed wrong even though it may be permissible so may your word speak to us we love you and we bless you in Jesus name and all the church said amen let's worship the Lord Strong and mighty fortress, raise your voice. 
sing with us. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. for your love and for your mercy. Father, bless your word as it is spoken this morning. Bless us, Father, in our time together today. We give you praise and honor. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. You may be seated. Hey, if you take your Bibles and turn to Proverbs 20 for just a moment. Hey, let me, uh, 
uh, give a good introduction here. Many of you know that um, I'm very biased when it comes to alcohol because uh, my father died in a detox center in Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, alcohol destroyed <clears throat> our home, our family, my mother and dad's relationship. My mom was a battered woman as a result of my dad's drinking. Uh, he was a functional alcoholic. In other words, he could drink, 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 um, and then he could be at work the next day like nothing happened. Not everybody can do that, but he could. Uh, but if my dad drank uh, hard liquor, uh, beer, wine, he was okay. But if he drank liquor, then there was going to be a fight with somebody, either you or somebody else. So you always had to know what he was drinking, whether you could talk to him or not. And, and I, I, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, but that was true because alcohol absolutely made him insane. And so I know I come from a very biased background. My daughter, you heard her uh, in May come on this stage and share how she got uh, addicted to heroin and to um, um, meth and uh, Alcohol was the great way, gateway drug that led to that. Now, let, let's be real honest. If you're an adult and here you've already made your mind up about alcohol, you, you, whether you socially drink or do not socially drink, whether it's okay, uh, all we're going to do is discuss some of the good reasons and some of the bad reasons and how you need to be very, very careful. If you're going to deal with alcohol, you need to know what you're dealing with. And so I, I just want to share it. And, and if you have your notes uh, in your bulletin, it says profitable passages. We do know, and I was Baptist a long time ago. They used to say, hey, if you drink, it's a sin. Well, there are passages in the Bible that indicate drinking alcoholic beverages was permissible. It's in there. You, you cannot deny that. And all the church said, now, whether it's right or not, that, that's where it, if, biblically is it okay. But then there's some negative passages. So all I want to do today is, some of you adults, I'm not going to convince you one way or the other. I see your cars at the bar. <laughs> you all right? And uh, I know your car, I know your tag, so I know you slide in on the, up on the state line. That's okay, I understand. Uh, but we have a lot of young people here today, and we really want to speak to them and make sure they understand what they're getting. By the way, every drunk knows the verse that says, Jesus turned the water into wine. Every drunk knows that by heart. And so uh, be careful with that. Hey, I'm going to read a verse. I'm going to tell a funny story. I heard this from Junior Hill probably 40 years ago about alcohol. And then uh, we're just going to talk today some, some things. L listen to this in Proverbs 21. And again, uh, we're, we're not being judgmental. We're trying to be uh, conversational uh, about the subject that is very sensitive, that's very hard for some people if you come from an alcoholic situation. It's very hard. And you're against all drinking. And I understand that. Uh, that's where I am. I have not taken a drink since 1975 until six weeks ago. And I'm going to tell you what happened. And uh, I took a drink. And I'll tell you why. And I'll explain it. And uh, matter of fact, it was on the church tab. <laughs> Y'all right? <laughs> I think I just got barred. And, um, but I'll explain in just a moment, okay? Uh, 1975 is the last time I, I was taking a young lady that uh, I knew as a friend to get an abortion. 1975, we're going to Mobile, and I, I how many of y'all remember Slit's beer? I, I, I drank a beer because I was scared to death. I was in a junior in high school. I was terrified. Uh, that's really the last time I took a drink, a drink as a drink. The one I did a couple of weeks ago was not. It's medicinal, and I'll explain the difference. Uh, it's in the Bible. So listen carefully to this verse, and then we're just going to have, a, 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 a hopefully, an intelligent biblical conversation, and that's all we're going to do. Uh, by the way, next week I'll put up a site. Uh, Christians beware, or uh, uh, Christians uh, be, uh, be knowledgeable or something. It's a young man discussing this about an hour, about an hour uh, into it, so it'll help you, okay? Listen to this. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not. Would you say that word? So we just want you to be wise. We want you to be informed and, and, and know. So I'm going to share nine reasons why I personally abstain from alcohol. You said, well, I drink. Well, they're, they're passages I understand. Hey, Junior Hill told this story years ago. There was a lady whose husband was an alcoholic, and he came home every night, and he, would, uh, he was drunk, and she'd go to bed, but he would throw up. I know this is kind of great. He would throw up in the sink. It was every night, every night. And, man, she just got so tired. She was sharing with a friend of hers her dilemma, and she said, well, I'll tell you what you do. Do what I did years ago. And she said, what's that? So go down to the grocery store and get some chicken livers and gizzards. And the sink that he throws up in, put them in the sink. And it's dark. He won't know the difference. And sure enough, she went and got some gizzards and some livers. And she put them in the sink. And the husband came in drunk. And he threw up like he did every night. Well, the next morning she got up came to the table. He was sitting at the table stone cold sober and having a drink of coffee. 
And she said, you okay? He said, no, I'm not okay. She said, well, what's wrong? Well, I came home last night like I did every night. I was drinking, and I threw up like I did every night. And, honey, last night I threw up some of my innards. And she said, well, what did you do? And he said, well, by the grace of God and a long-handled spoon, we got them all back down. (laughs) Amen? So, strong drink is a brawler. And whoever's led astray by it is not. You'll eat chicken gizzards. So, um, (laughs) <laughs> don't drink. Hey, I, I got this from, again, Dr. Steve Gaines. Don't want to plagiarize no more than I have to. We all do it, I guess, from time to time. He had seven. I, I've added a couple. And so um, if you look under these passages, profitable passages, the ones profitable typically are speaking about the harvest time. So the, the new harvest is in, and you say, no, well, pastor, it's new wine. It's not old wine, so it has not fermented. That really doesn't hold biblically because usually when the wine would come in, it would take them a while to, to do the processing. And so it's not right out of the field. It's been there for a while. So let me read you a profitable verse uh, about alcohol and what it can do and hopefully should do. And then I'll tell you um, how you need to be careful. Listen to Psalms 104. Now listen carefully to this. And wine that makes glad the heart of man. Now, the Hebrew word there, I'm not going to go into a Hebrew lesson, don't need to do that, but the Hebrew word there for wine is a not the fruit of the vine, not middle ground. It is wine that has fermented and it makes you feel good. And by the way, could we all just be adults here for a moment? I, again, I haven't been intoxicated since 1975, so I'm assuming it still makes you feel good. That's what this verse says. Does it not? Read it carefully with me. Read it honestly with open eyes. He says, and wine that makes glad the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. You cannot hide that. If you're going to take the whole counsel of God, you're going to believe it as as some of our fundamentalist brothers would say, if you're going to believe it from cover to cover, then don't ignore the verses that say that. And all the church said, so it is there. So, So how do we, from a biblical standpoint, approach Christians and alcoholic beverages well Dr. Gaines came up with seven reasons why he chose and again he said I know the profitable verses but here's some reasons why I chose not to drink his wife and himself and and so let's just look at some of these and I'll I'll make comments to them as we go through I'm I'm not being judgmental if you take a social drink if you drink a beer drink a glass of wine I'm I'm just telling you, you need to be careful I'm gonna tell you why there's some reasons especially if you have children number one um and, and this, you, you, hear, you see this on the news a lot. It does not take much, and, and I scribble these down real fast, it doesn't take much to become intox- intoxicated. Um, if you don't drink a whole lot and you drink a little bit, now listen to me, and you're on the way home and you get into a fender bender and they take your alcohol content, guess what? Guess what? You're intoxicated. You said, but I'm not a drunkard. Didn't say you were. But if something happens, you get pulled over and you get stopped and they do a breathalyzer on you and there's a little alcohol there, you're going to be in trouble. So be careful if you're not used to drinking and you drink some. My daughter said that, said, Dad, she overdosed one time because she had stopped for a while and then she went back taking and she wasn't used to taking the full amount and she tried as much as she did the time before and because her system wasn't used to it, kicked her into a very difficult, dangerous point. Be careful with alcohol because you think, well, I, I just drank one beer. I just drank a glass of wine. Well, that may be true, but if you're in a wreck and somebody gets killed and they take your alcohol, guess what? You still go down as a what? DUI. So I'm just speaking from reason here. Be careful because that could happen. You didn't intend to, for that to happen. You didn't mean for that. to. You're not a brawler. You're not a drunkard, but you were with friends. You took a drink, and on the way home, you had a wreck, and then popped up on the, the, the breathalyzer, and then um, you could be in a lot of trouble. Hey, and I put parentheses here. If you can say this, I can drink anybody on the table, your drinking's a sin. If you can drink that much, and you can handle it and control it, then the Bible, I do, I do believe, teaches that it has become sin. And I'll get into that verse in a moment. Number two, uh, and this is interesting with the Hebrew and the Greek culture from where they were for what they had to drink. There's plenty of other wise choices today that were not available then. Okay, what, what do you mean? Well, we know that back then they didn't have a 7-Eleven. Oh, I, I just dated myself. They don't have a store on the every corner. 
Um, you know what I'm talking about? They didn't, you couldn't go get a Pepsi or a Coca-Cola. So their water there was very unfiltered, and, and it was very dangerous sometimes. If you've ever gone to another country and they said, don't drink the water, well, that, that's some simpler things. And, and I don't have time to flesh all this out. But sometimes in the Bible they use that because water was not a good choice, and so they would drink wine. Today you got all the choices you need. Just go out to the coffee cafe, not the coffee bar. All right, and get you a halulika malate, whatever they got out there. They've got stuff. I don't. I don't know if it's legal or it may have something in it. It looks like it's alcohol, but they don't. They say it's not. Y'all all right? Y'all seen those bottles on the wall? Looks like whiskey to me, but they say it's not. Hey, number three. Let's move on. Uh, this is interesting, and, and I'll, I'll stay here a moment. You do not need alcohol today for medicinal purposes. We do know that Paul said in 1 Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach infirmities. We know that is in the Bible. You cannot ignore that. Not if you're going to take an honest approach to Scripture. But today there's too many other choices. Um, NyQuil has been called Baptist bourbon for many years. Amen. Say, hey, hey I, don't, I don't feel good. little NyQuil. Well, you're getting drunk. Um, this happened to me personally. Um, I, I don't want to go into too much detail. I had to have a medical procedure done to my body. It was very painful. My wife was with me, and it, it just went very bad. And it really got, I mean, it was really bad. And uh, I had to have a procedure done to me. And, to, and I don't want to go into all of it. It's too personal. But to, to, they had to go back and fix it later. Well, I went to my pharmacist, great Christian brother, Layman Brewer's son. And I said, hey, man, i got to go have this thing taken out of me. And he didn't give me any pain pills. He said, what? And I said, man, I'm scared to death. He said, I would be too. He said, here's what to do. Uh, go get a bottle of NyQuil. And about two hours before they do the procedure, drink half of it. And then 30 minutes before they do that, drink the rest of it. And so I did. And I came to church. And I couldn't talk. And they said, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. I drank some NyQuil. And they said, you're drunk. Uh, I was intoxicated <laughs> as your pastor. Um, that happened. Hey, we, we do know that there are medicinal reasons. I can go to the book of Proverbs and show you where it says, if a man's dying, give him some alcoholic beverages to make him feel better. It's painkiller. Uh, if a man's depressed to the point of suicide, give him alcohol. It's in the book of Proverbs. The wisest man in the world said that. You cannot. I just think today that doesn't really, uh, I, I think there's other ways to get around that today. There's other stuff. Because um, if somebody sees you, you know, they said the only time Baptists don't talk to each other is when they meet each other on the alcohol aisle. And they pass and they just don't talk. Uh, pr probably other things you could do. Um, uh, and, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Number four is the one. Turn to 1 Corinthians 6. Um, we can tell a lot of our crowd is down today. Alabama played in Arkansas, so we know where everybody is. So uh, we pray for their safe return home and that they don't drink alcohol while they're coming back. And they'll be okay. 1 Corinthians 6. Let, let, let's look at this passage. It's pretty lengthy. Um, Paul is dealing with a very immature church. The Corinthian church w w had a lot of problems. Uh, they, we spoke about it a couple of months ago. They have problems with uh, special gifts in the church. They were confused about that, sexual immorality. And another was drinking. Uh, they, they would literally get intoxicated in the Lord's Supper. And so Paul wrote them about what is right to do and what is not to do. Uh, number four is, is one I want you to listen to me. Alcohol is very addictive. Well, I'm, I'm not going to become an alcoholic. I don't know anybody that ever set out to become an alcoholic. But I'm looking at four people right now who your family has been touched. And there's others. I just, I, I just know your story. My dad died in alcohol uh, in, in a detox center. Miss Judy's daddy was an alcoholic for a lot of his life. He's a great guy at the end, but he'll tell you I was, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, we were in Deacon's meeting this morning. One of the guys said, hey, I'm an alcoholic. I haven't drank in 20 years, but I'm an alcoholic. So alcohol, you don't intend to become an alcoholic. But you never know after that first drink what's going to happen. And young people, that's why you need to be, well, well I'm, I'm going to work, and you may intend on that. Nobody intended to become a slot drunk, a homeless person that everybody looks at with pity. 
alcohol. That's why Proverbs says it's, it's be careful with it. It's very dangerous. So listen to what Paul said about, well, is it okay for me to drink or is it not okay? That, that's a difficult question. Let me try to explain it this way. We're going to begin in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. Now, therefore, it is already uh, an utter failure for you that you go to law against your brother. And why do you rather accept wrong? And he's, again, dealing with some, some very immature Christians. Number eight, no, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. You do these things, your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covenants, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this. And some, and such were some of you, but you were washed, and you're sanctified, and you're justified. So he said, man, a lot of you used to be that, but now you've gotten saved. But look at verse 12. So, so pastor... How do I determine if taking a social drink is wrong? Uh, that's a very, it's kind of a complicated question. And he's going to give you kind of a, something to think about. And here it is. If I'm a Christian and I'm a believer and I'm sitting in a restaurant and I'm drinking alcoholic beverage and a younger brother walks in or a mature believer walks in and he sees me drinking, how is that going to affect my witness for Christ? For instance, um, I, I'll just tell you, I would be mortified, and again, I haven't drank since 1975, if one of these young men or young ladies walked into a restaurant and saw me drinking, and they justified their drinking because their pastor drinks. Y'all see what I just said? I would be mortified that they would do something based off of what they thought was allowable, or here's the word permissible, because I did it. So Paul deals with that, and it gets kind of technical here. Verse 12, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under power of any. That's a big word right there. First of all, he says this, never be addicted to alcohol. I will not come under bondage to anything. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it. Now the body is not for sexual immorality also, but the Lord and the Lord of the body. God raised up him by the power. Know your bodies, you're the member of Christ. Shall I then, listen to this, shall I then take the members of Christ, and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body? And, and he just keeps on talking about that and how we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me carefully. Because I am saved, because I am a, a leader to somewhat, whatever degree that is, I do not want alcohol in any way. Even though God may allow me to drink it, I would not want it to become a stumbling block to a younger brother or sister in Christ. Everybody just hear what I said? So I would not want to use that occasion where I can drink an alcoholic beverage and then somebody see me do it and then they think, well, it's okay for me to do it because the pastor does it. Okay? Uh, or, a, or a leader or a Christian. And so I think that's something you need to at least think about when you engage an alcoholic. Uh, l listen to number five. I do not want my drinking to call someone else, listen carefully, to drink. Parents, what you do in moderation, now here it is, you're at home, you're drinking a glass of wine, you're not bothering anybody, but your young boy or girl sees you do that. Listen to me. That's a green light. It's okay to drink. Mom and daddy drink, I can drink. All right? So be careful because you may be able to handle it in moderation, but your child sees you drink and then they go drink uh, we were talking this morning that we know that alcohol can trigger some, and I don't want to get into all this chemical imbalance stuff from a medical, I'm just talking from a biblical cultural standpoint, but there are some medical experts out there that tell you there's some things in the brain that triggers alcoholism, and when you take that first drink, whatever that is, and again, I'm, I'm not um, prepared to speak on that at all other than to say, be careful with it. Because mom and dad, what you do in moderation, your children may do in excess. I would not want to be the reason my children become drunkards. Getting real quiet, isn't it? Um, I won't use names. There's a story told of a man whose daughter graduated from college. I'm using bad illustrations or hard ones because I don't know how serious it is. Man's daughter graduated college. She did a phenomenal thing. He got a call about 11 o'clock that night. 
She had been in an automobile accident, and he went to the scene. When he opened the door, a whiskey bottle rolled out, and his daughter was pronounced dead on the scene. He picked the whiskey bottle up, and he said, when I find the SOB that gave my daughter this drink, I'm going to kill him. Most parents would. He went home. He was upset. He went to his cabinet where he kept his alcohol, opened the door, and there was a note. Dear Dad, graduating tonight, didn't think you would mind. I borrowed one of your bottles. True story. So when, just know that when you play with alcohol, know what you're playing with. And all the church said, if you're going to play with it, know what you're dealing with. I do not want my drinking to cause someone else in any way to, uh, to be a stumbling block uh, to do that. Um, when you look at this, again, 1 Corinthians 6, and I, man, I just hit the high points right here. You need to go and read all this. He said, just be careful because just so you can do it doesn't mean, and it may be permissible, meaning the Lord said it's okay, but how is that going to affect somebody else? I do think you need to think about that as a Christian. We do need to think about that. Number six, and this is it, is it hindering my witness for Christ? Do I get out of control with it? Um, uh, and I'll get into this just a little bit more in a moment. It, it makes you do things you normally wouldn't say. Proverbs 21 says it makes you a babbling fool. You ever seen anybody drunk? Sure. We, we, it, it makes you a babbling fool. And uh, you say, well, I can handle it. That's great for you, but somebody else may not. So it may hinder your witness for Christ. That, that I think as Christians, we need to at least think about that and ask the Lord, is this in any way helpful or harmful? And if it is, then I want to do the right thing. As Christians, we do want to do the right thing. And everybody said, that's all this is. You said, well, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a social drinker. I don't take it too far. God bless. We'll just make sure. Number seven, even though it is lawful, Paul said it may not be profitable. I said I take a drink six weeks ago on the church's tab. Well, Pastor, what do you mean? Um, I went to Kentucky to pick up a little uh, thing for the preschool. And I was just coming off, I think, COVID. I still had a bad lung and head problem. And um, um, they wanted a little table back there. And we found one real cheap up in Kentucky. So I jumped in the car on Saturday, Sunday afternoon. And I took a trailer. And I went to Kentucky to pick it up. And uh, I realized I could not get the lights to work on the trailer. And so I didn't want to be driving after dark. I didn't want to break the law. <laughs> Amen. And so... Uh, I got to Kentucky, and I found the hotel I was going to stay in, and right across the street was a steakhouse, but it was getting real dark. I forgot about the time change. I left here. I thought I'd get there at 6. I got there at 7, so it's getting kind of dark. I said, oh, man, I, I need something for this cold. My head was throbbing. My chest was hurting. I was coughing. I mean, I was, I was really in bad shape, so I was looking for a pharmacy. Couldn't find one in that area. So by the time I ate, it, it had got dark, and now I'm feeling really bad. I mean, terrible. And so... Uh, the maitre d' or whatever, the, the waitress come out and said, hey, do y'all have any alcoholic beverages here? And she said, sir, this is Kentucky. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Didn't mean to offend you, you know. She, to which she replied, what kind do you want? I said, I don't have a clue. I have never in my life drinking, drank, drank, drank a mixed drink. Never. I, I didn't know what a Long Island, New York Island tea, whatever it is, Long Island tea, I, I didn't know. Um. And I said, D do you have any bourbon? I don't know what bourbon is. I've never drank bourbon. And she said, yes, sir. And I said, uh, how much is a shot? Is that what you say, a shot? Yeah, some of y'all shaking your head real fast there. You might want to slow down. Um, and I said, w w w can I get a shot? And so they brought it. I said, oh, no, 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 I need it to go. She says, Sir. I said, well, I'm not going to drink whiskey and then get in a car and drive and kill somebody. That would be sin, right, while we're dealing with sin. And I said, well, just, could you put it in a paper cup? She said, no, <laughs> you don't put whiskey, bur bourbon, t t Kentucky bourbon in a cup. I said, well, I, I just would like something to go because I feel real bad, and I need something. I can't go get some medicinal stuff like Burbis, Babish Bourbon NyQuil. So, um, and so she <laughs> They, bought, they finally brought the drink man out. I don't know what you call him. Who, who runs the bar? The drink man. Who? Boy, y'all know that real fast. And bartender. And I said, hey, sir, I'm real sick. 
I just would like something to clear my head up. You got something? Oh, yeah, I got something. Knock it out of you. I'll, I'll kill you right up, boy. So go get it. Put it in a cup. In a what? He said, I would like it in a cup so I can take it with me because I'm not going to drink it here and then dry it. He said, wow. Never had that request. I said, can you sweeten it up? He said, why? I said, because I don't think I'm going to like what I'm barley and, you know, you're drinking wheat out of the ground. Anyhow. So I got the cup and went to the room. And uh, by the way, I didn't put it on the church's credit card to pay cash. That's the first thing Judy asked me. She said, please tell me you didn't put that on the credit card for the church, <laughs> that you bought whiskey in Kentucky. And so I paid cash. And I got back to the room. And, and, and I'm going to tell you all, uh, I'm fixing to be 65 years old. I weigh about 200 pounds plus. Man, that first wig staggered me. I was not prepared. I mean... My sinuses cleared up. My eyes started running. Uh, I started seeing things in the room, and I've only taken, and uh, they only gave me a, I actually got a half a shot, whatever that is. And so I, I couldn't drink it all. But um, again, for medicinal pers- purposes, um, I can't even say it. Um, but but now, don't, don't you listen to me. Why would you put it in the cup? I didn't want anybody there to see. Nobody knew me. But again, I didn't want to hinder my witness for Christ. Um, again, I don't think that would be any different than going and getting NyQuil or a fireball. I'm sounding pretty educated on this stuff now. <laughs> I go in the stores, they got fireball, cinnamon fireballs. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, y'all do. <clears throat> um, so, how much time I got left? I got to get out of here. This is, uh, I'm, I'm ready for this to be over. Number eight, I want you to listen. This is just advice. Alcohol reduces your ability to reason. Did y'all hear what I just said? Alcohol impairs your ability to make reasonable decisions. So my purpose in doing this today, again, I got plenty of things preached, was just to say, hey, if you're going to mess with that stuff, you better know what you're messing with. Now, the Bible does say there comes a point that drinking does become a sin. Everybody clear on that? I read 1 Corinthians that all drunkards go to hell. My daddy was a drunkard. I I hope he got saved. He told me he was saved. But alcohol ruined his life. My daddy was a, a man's man. People feared my dad. 67, my dad shot a man. Crippled him. That's my dad. If he said he's going to shoot you, you better just go and lay down and call the ambulance because he's going to shoot you. He didn't play. But he said he's going to fight. He's going to fight. And I'm telling you, as strong as my dad was, mentally, physically, it literally consumed his life. Um, I, I don't want... How many young women have lost their purity because of alcohol? Have become pregnant? How many young men have lost their ability to make a living for their family? How many divorces? How many abused women? Can I go on and on and on and on? The saddest story I've ever heard was Jack Hiles, who lived in Chicago, Illinois, right outside of Chicago, was doing a funeral one time, and a little five-year-old boy got ran over, and he was in the coffin, and uh, the dad was an alcoholic. He was not living with the family, but they allowed him to come to the funeral. And they said that when he came up to the coffin, um, that he tried to take the little boy's shoes off so he could go hawk them to get a drink. Alcohol doesn't play. It is very dangerous. By the way, I throw tobacco in there. My mother died because of lung cancer. Judy's dad died lung cancer. There's some things if you play with, they will bite you. The end is very dangerous, and that's what Proverbs 21 says. By the, way, by the way, go on and read, I think, 22. It says, when you look at the red wine a long time, it's like a, a snake. It bites. It reduces your ability to reason. Well, I'm, I can handle it. I'm telling you, my dad was a man's man, and it ruined his life. So if you're going to drink alcohol uh, as a Christian, make sure you know where you are you know, there, there's, they say if you're 250 miles away from church, you can do anything you want. 
That's a lie. Uh, what happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas because God knows what you're doing. All right, let's clear that up. Well, when I go off, I can play. Well, if you're a Christian, you belong to Jesus here as well as Las Vegas. I just rode through there on my motorcycle, doing 100 miles an hour with my hair on fire because I was scared to death. Uh, I didn't like Las Vegas. Um, I put one more in here, and I got just enough time to deal with this. Um, medically speaking, they tell us that some people, I'm not saying that alcohol is not a sin and that it's chemically dependent, even though there seem to be some medical books that would indicate that. And here's why I put number nine. You're playing Russian roulette. Here's what you're doing. You're gambling that you're going to be able to handle it. You're gambling. So as your pastor, here's my point. Why even play with it at all? Why take a chance? You bring a snake into your house, you're probably going to get what? Bit. Why? Why take a chance at all? If it's not medicinal, if it's not needed, I would be very, very careful, especially around young people and young people who are very impressionable. And so I think you, you just need to watch yourself when you do that, okay? Psalms 104 says, drink the, the, the wine that makes you feel good, all right? Hey, let's do this real quickly, and then we, we're going to get out of here. Proverbs 21, T turn back over there. Would you do that real quick? Proverbs 21. Um, let's just let's, uh, look at a few things here, hopefully, that will, will help. Um, again, let, let me read. Proverbs 20 and 1, wine is a mocker, strong drink. Now, now notice how he said strong drink again. Um, hey, here's a question. I meant to put this in here and I failed to. So when Jesus turned the water into wine, was that fruit juice or wine? Um, I studied both sides of that. Um, Dr. John MacArthur probably does the best on that of anybody. Uh, they would dilute that down but if you take the jewish custom now let's go back two thousand years the jewish custom and remember what they said about the wine you save the what kind of wine till last the what the best wine so evidently it was not just great welch's fruit juice great juice it was good wine um and uh, as much as i hate alcohol as much as i but you've got to be honest with Scripture. If you're going to say you believe it's inspired, then you need to be honest with it. And all the church said, Jewish custom would indicate that probably that was fermented wine. Again, I hate it. I hate to even have to tell you that, but I, I, it, it's there. So uh, we, we need to do that, okay? Uh, j just so, you, so you'll know that. Uh, our time is running out. Let me see if I can find one other verse here I wanted to read for you guys. Um, and you say, Pastor, um, everything you said is wrong. I I'm okay with that. Drinking is fine as long as you handle it right. I, I understand. Um, if, if you can, great. Other people may not be. Um, look at uh, Proverbs 23, 19. Proverbs 23. Hear, my son, and be wise, and guide your heart in the way. Do not mix with wine, bibbers. Now, now notice this, are with gluttoners. Hey, pastor, is overeating? Eaters of meat. I, I'll say this, and Dr. Gaines did this, is kind of funny. I'd rather meet a fat man driving a car than a drunkard, wouldn't you? Uh, just throw some funny in here I, if, if we got to deal with it. Um, yeah, sure, it, it's a sin. Look at what he says, though. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to what? Poverty. So this is a guy that's no longer drinking socially. This is a guy that has crossed the line. And his alcohol has become an absolute um, problem in his life. Then he says this, and drowsiness will close a man with rags. Boy, that, that's tough, isn't it? Um, let, let me read one other. And again... I, can, I could read other, and I gave positive passages. I'm just trying to finish up here to warn you and to be wise. Proverbs 23, 29, then we'll, we'll go home. But listen to this. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions and complaints? Who has wounds without cease? Who has redness of eyes? 
Who is this person? Who is he talking about? Well, he tells you. The one who lingers long at the wine. Those who go in search of a mixed drink. And then he says something here, and I want you to hear this. Do not, do not look at the wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. And then he says this. It stings like a viper. And it bites like a what? Snake. Why is your purpose of doing this, Pastor? I want to give you a biblical overview, and that's all I've done. It's not exhaustive, just a biblical overview of alcohol. There are passages that would seem to say social is okay, permissible, but is it lawful? Again, my reasoning is this. Why fool with it at all? If you know there's the possibility that it could destroy your life. I have had the misfortune of doing funerals for young people who have died because of alcohol accidents. It's not fun. A lot of questions. So when we come to this subject of alcohol, let's be honest about it. Let's be biblical about it. In the Jewish days, there were times when they had feasts and festivals and they seemed to say, Let's celebrate with that. But in the same frame, they said, but there's a line not to cross. When do you know when to cross that line? Is it one beer or two beers? Is it one beer or one beer and half a beer? Or is it one glass of wine or two glasses of wine? Y'all see what I'm saying? So how do you determine where that thing is? So as Christians, by the way, uh, there's some cultures you go to, if you don't drink, they're offended. But let me say, opposite of that, there are also some cultures you go to, if you drink at all, they consider you lost and a heathen. So we have to be careful with that. So I, I've given you the passage. Next week I'm going to put the uh, side up there that you can go to, and there's a young man, young pastor, and he's going to discuss this. He's not yay or nay. He's just going to give you every verse, some reasons to be careful, some reasons to be wise, and to watch out. Solomon said, the one who lingers long at the wine will end up wearing rags and it'll bite like a serpent. The last time I saw my dad alive was in Laurel, Mississippi. He was in a detox center and because he was going through a detox, he had tremors. Again, my dad was a, and uh, he was in a wheelchair and they had sedated him and I walked in and uh, even when I was a young pastor, my dad lived at the bar. My mom and dad had divorced, and so when I came home, I'd go to the bar to see my dad because I loved my dad, and I wasn't going to let that. So, so I made sure I didn't let that separate us. And I remember walking in that day, and, and again, this is the guy that I, I young looked up to, and I said, Dad, how you doing? And this way he said, please get me out of here. Please get me out of here. And... Uh, I said, Dad, I can't. And he said, why? And I said, Dad, because you got a problem. And the only way right now to fix that problem is medically. I believe that was on a Friday. I believe I'm right. I think I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'd gone home. And on Sunday, I got a call from my older brother, L.C., what had happened, my dad was, again, they had uh, given him drugs to keep him from having tremor so bad. And where he was staying was a lockdown unit. You couldn't get out without knowing numbers on the door. You all know what I'm talking about. And somehow that door had got lodged open. And my dad saw his escape. And he rolled his wheelchair as fast as he could to that door. And had pushed it open. And was fixing to leave. And one of the nurses said, Sam. And when she did, my dad turned, tripped over the wheelchair, and hit his head. He had to be uh, med back to a hospital. He had massive brain trauma, bleeding on the brain, it, just the whole nine yards. I'm, I'm sorry, that wasn't the last time I saw my dad. Uh, my sister called me. After my brother said, hey, Dad, fail, he burst his head open. He's in the hospital. And uh, so I believe, I believe it was like five days later. It's been a long time ago. 
I jumped in the car and went back to, this time, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And my dad was in respiratory failure. His brain was not operating. The doctor said, there's nothing we can do. All because of alcohol. And my sister, who is an RN nurse, came in. And she said, Doc, he does not have a living will. We do not want him to live like this. My dad was unconscious. He was breathing so hard his body would almost come off the table or out of the bed trying to get air. He was in respiratory failure. And the doctor said, uh, told my sister, said, well, I, I can't do that. He doesn't have a living will. And uh, so I had gone to get something to eat, and she called me, and she said, it's okay with you. I don't want to see Dad live like this anymore. I said, well, I, and so my sister unplugged my dad, and he died because of alcohol. Now, I'm just telling you, if you play with it, you better be prepared for the consequences because it can be deadly. Moms and dads, if your children see you drink, consequences. There's enough for both sides of this conversation. We don't have time. I would just say this. Solomon said, be wise because it bites like a serpent and it stings like an adder. And you never know where it's going to lead you to. So church, I'm just going to leave it in your hands. You have a Bible. I've given you scripture. You go home and you pray and you seek God's will and you follow his advice. And all the church said, Y'all all right? Y'all still like me? Good. Amen. I love you. And uh, young people, listen to me. You've got a long life ahead of you. You've got a lot of good things coming your way. Don't let alcohol mess it up. Don't let drugs make you do something you wished you hadn't done. All right? So be careful. It may look fun on TV. Doesn't it always look fun on TV? They're lying. Be careful. They don't show you the ghettos. For the homeless people who've lost everything because they took a drink and it took their life. So, enough. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. And, uh, Father, I'm here just to encourage people. I'm not here to, to, to point my finger. I'm not here to, to judge other than to say what the Bible says. And that is, if you're going to fool with this stuff, you better be careful. It is dangerous. It is deadly. And many people have been deceived. Many people, lives have been ruined because of picking up a beer, uh, and what seems to be an innocent glass of alcohol. You adults have already made up your mind. I understand. You're good. Maybe, maybe you can have, God bless you. But for those who haven't, please be careful. Please be careful. Watch yourself. You're dealing with danger. Father, I pray for the person here today who's crossed that line and now they're an alcoholic and they can't stop. They want to stop, but they can't. They don't want to hurt their family, but they have. They don't want to lose their job, but they probably will. So I pray for them today. Hey, this invitation, maybe you know somebody right now that's battling alcoholism and you want to just pray for them. Ask God to give the Holy Spirit the strength to do that. Maybe you just want to come pray for them. If you need help, again, I've told you, I've had people here that can help you with that professionally and biblically. If you need somebody to call, I'll give you a name, I'll give you a number. All right? Holy Spirit of God, speak in this place today. Thank you for grace and mercy and forgiveness. And I do believe my daughter was delivered, delivered by the power of God. It was more than just her choice. She was involved, but she turned her life over to you. And because of that, you gave her strength to break that strong, demonic hold. And that's what it is in their life. So if there's somebody today drowning, drowning, give them grace. May they come to you, the Lord Jesus. May you help them. May you give them peace. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. And all the church said, well, amen. I know that is one sensitive subject, and it's tough. So 
I pray for you as you make these decisions. Again, this is for young people who are starting out in life who need to be very, very careful and, and ask the Lord to please uh, be there with them, okay? Hey, Ken Johnson, you come up and pray for us. Ken has been down this road. He knows, and um, he's, uh, he's had the sorrow of having to deal with this. For the boy of his, who's like a son of my own, we've had to walk and uh, have some tough, tough times. So it's very hard. Hey, it's okay when you do it, but when somebody you love takes their life over, it gets a little bit different conversation. So a lot of people in this room have cried tears, have wept, and prayed and asked God to give grace. And so that's what we're here for today. Amen? Hey, aren't you glad God loves everybody? I, I mean, He does. He does. He does. Yes. Bless you, Kim. Yeah. Ain't, yeah. Wow. Bet. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, Wow. Um, Kimberly, Kimberly grew up here with my daughter. And uh, by the way, my daughter had a 32 on her ACT test, could have went anywhere in this country. Bright it in the word. And she took the wrong thing at the wrong time, like Kimberly did. And so I guess Courtney will live in a rehab maybe for the rest of her life, uh, even though she had a bright future. I'm, again, I'm not here to condemn. That's not my place. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to tell you. There's some dangerous things out there, and one of them's alcohol. Please be careful. Don't, don't think because it's on TV and everybody does it and gets away with it. There's some dangerous ones. And I just want you to see the other side of that. And that's all this is about. Amen? All right. Hey, I love you guys. Hey, I'll be out here in the uh, foyer if you want to see me. Jim Warren, it is such a joy and an honor to have you in our presence today, my brother. We love you, okay? Pray for us, brother. Say, you sure can. can. Please. It's like Brother Ronnie said. I've been through a lot of this, and I know what it's like. And I want to talk to this two rows right here, most of all. Y'all at the age right now to where the pressure is going to be on you. You're going to have friends out there that wants to be at a party or whatever, and, and they're going to try to influence you to join them and stuff. I see athletes right here like crazy that are good. Don't be influenced by that. You want to be cool? It's not drinking. You want to be cool? Say no. That's the big thing, is to be able to tell them, no, I ain't got to do this. I got a future ahead of me. Like Kimberly said, you can waste a lot of your life in the early years right here by wasting it with alcohol, drugs, or whatever. And it's everywhere now. And there's so dangerous drugs out there right now that you definitely don't want to take any chances. And I just want to say I've seen it in my family. I got one son that can drink and not drink, and drink one and then stop. I got one that's alcoholic. You don't know if you're alcoholic or not till you take that first drink. If you take that out first drink and you're an alcoholic, you're going to, you're going to fall down that road that you're talking about. You're going, you're going to think you've got to have it from then on. Same thing with a lot of the drugs right now. You take it that one time, that's why they got them like they are, because they want you to be addicted to it. There's money made on it. So I just want to say, be cool, say no, and, and don't waste it. But that very best part of your life is right ahead of you right now. Most of these people out here is a little bit older. They know what I'm saying. But right now, Y'all got the chance to make your life great from now on. So don't don't waste it. Be cool. Thank y'all for listening to me. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house, to Lord, to praise your name and, and to hear your words. And Lord, we just pray for uh, each family that's represented here today, Lord, that you'll just be with each family, especially the ones that's dealing with these alcoholic problems. Lord, just put your loving arms around them and help them through these times. And Lord, for these young people, Lord, just help them, give them strength to stand up against stuff like this. And Lord, we just want to praise you today for who you are and what you mean to us. Lord, we love you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen.